position. Let, let's imagine that in, in our galaxy, 400 billion suns, uh, there's just us that thinks, right? There may be microbes all over the place, but in terms of things that think and can feel and in a very real sense bring meaning to the universe, all these things we've talked about, the beauty of these galaxies, they're not beautiful if there's nothing there to perceive them, right? They're just galaxies. So if that's it in this galaxy, then the decisions that we make now as, as a civilization have a galactic implications, right? If we destroy ourselves, for example, deliberately or through inaction, then it's possible that we eliminate meaning, perhaps forever, in a galaxy of 400 billion stars. And so that's it, I think that leads you to- I personally don't believe that's gonna ever happen, given that a little over 100 years ago, we were prescribing leeches for infections. And today, we can develop an mRNA vaccine in under a year. But anytime I spend a little more time than I should on social media, I truly doubt the faith I have in my own species. Mmm, ice cream so good. Thank you, Lopez. Slay, huh? Mmm, ice cream so good. Anyway, this calls for an interesting theme of discussion. In the tragic event of a pandemic wiping us all out and all the AI system left behind are pointless, who will eventually step up to the top of the ladder and one day rummage through our remains? as a long-lost civilization. Welcome to another episode of Blank Note. One key anatomical feature which rose humans to the top of the ladder is our dexterous hands. If a society wants to thrive, it needs to be able to manipulate objects effectively in order to build cities and heavily modify the world around them. Thumbs, opposing thumbs, or something equal. And of course, the first alternative to think of is our closest relatives, chimpanzees or bonobos. It is possible that if we go extinct, these hominids might step up to the job. Some of them already use their thumbs to make tools in the wild. Just like we outlived the Neanderthals 40,000 years ago, it would take these hominids thousands or even millions of years to develop abilities to create and use sophisticated human-like tools. However, Whatever kills us is very probable to kill other primates too, as we share a lot of biology with them. When we talk about intelligent animals, dolphins usually make it to the top of the list. They are notoriously talented mimics and quick learners. They demonstrate self-awareness, problem-solving, and empathy, innovation, teaching skills, grief, joy, and playfulness. But living under the water rules out fire and electricity. So first, it would take a couple of hundred million years to evolve out of the water, and then another couple of million years to evolve dexterous abilities. Speaking of which, another underwater animal already has those abilities, and something even better than thumbs, tentacles, which they use in a manner that makes them only the second smartest animal after humans. Octopuses can learn to distinguish between real and virtual objects. They can solve mazes, complete complicated tasks, open jars, escape aquariums. They can engineer their living environment and also live in communities. But if hot-blooded, air-breathing mammals like dolphins need hundreds of millions of years to evolve, it will take octopuses even more. Vertebrates have iron in their blood cells, which binds to oxygen very efficiently. In contrast, octopuses and their relatives have copper-based blood cells, these molecules still bind to oxygen, but less readily, and as a result, octopuses are confined to oxygen-saturated waters, as opposed to thin air. Okay, we tried earth and water. What about air? Despite stereotypes, birds are very intelligent, with crows and ravens being able to challenge even chimps. Some birds have highly dexterous abilities, using feet and beaks to build nests, or all kinds of wiring. The African grey parrot can learn up to a hundred words, do simple math, and even understand the concept of zero. They can also live in communal nesting sites, with some of these sites being occupied for decades. But they will probably never need to modify the world around them, build roads or megacities. If you can fly away to the next best habitable climate, why would you even settle? And that brings us to the toughest, most probable dominating animal out there. Insects. They have been around for 480 million years. They have evolved to probably every niche, 
from flying, swimming, borrowing, and even building city-like towers. Ants and termite organizing resemble humanity more than anything else. Ants are known to form fungi. Termites can communicate in long distances using vibrations. Their colonies can build complex structures, collaborate socially, manipulate objects, if not solo, in groups. They can modify their environment. Who needs thumbs if you have multiple limbs? They can outlive anything with their surviving skills and extreme resistance towards viruses. Whatever the successor of insects will look like in a hundred million years, they will probably rule the world, as long as there's no humans around with a raid spray can. I can't help it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> of course, this is all speculation, based on what we know today on Earth and the life in it. The gap between us and every other animal in the world is monumental. During these last millennia, it has grown in even crazier amounts. We know this universe better than anything has ever known, probably since its very beginning. Earth has continuously been trying to kill us, and yet we always find ways to overcome it. Even when any kind of life becomes impossible on this planet, our species, probably stationed somewhere else, will still have a presence on it, in the form of AI, radio signals or technology. So technically, we will never leave. Hey, thank you so much for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace and love.